Amen. All right, all right. You got some brownies? Amen. Yeah, there's brownies back there if anybody wants any. I brought some today, so I'm going to try to bring some. We used to do that, Brother Edward. I'm going to try to bring some more snacks for us on Wednesday nights. Amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. Well, thanks, for everybody, for coming, and uh, thank, thank everybody for watching as well, for tuning in Wednesday night. Amen. My favorite time of the week, Wednesday night. <laughs> amen. Amen. I think more some more people will be rolling in, too. Amen. So um, we just thank God, you know, for everything he's doing. I hope that you all are having a blessed week. Amen. I'm having a good week so far. Amen. Good work week. Amen. Um, I just We just got like a, a paper that uh, Gloria had brought us in the mail, something about how we might, I don't, I would have to look into it, see, I don't catch me lying, but some type of deal that they might find oil under the land or something like that. And if they do, we would get like a royalty every month or something. So the property that the church is on. So I don't know how that's going to work out. But yeah, praise God for that, man, because that could be a monthly check we're getting every month, which I would, which I would, hey, I would not turn that down. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Y'all wouldn't turn away a $150 check every month, would y'all? Amen. No, no siree. I would make that $150 last. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to be here with you guys tonight, and um, uh, we're going to have a great service today, amen? amen? Really good service, amen? I hope you came expecting and just waiting, you know, to see what the Lord is going to do, because uh, we had a good service Sunday, man. I really enjoyed that, amen? I really felt just refreshed as I, as I left uh, on Sunday, and um, felt like I really needed that, Mary. You know, sometimes you just need to, you need to move away and just allow God to take over in the situations in your life. Amen. And uh, he knows exactly what people need. He knows what you want. You know, the Bible says that he knows what we need, Brother Edward, before we even need those things, you know. So he looks ahead and he sees all that stuff and he meets us right where we need him to, you know. And so I just, uh, I was just in awe of God on Sunday, you know. So um, I'm excited to see what, what more God is going to do. You know, I'm excited for this year. Uh, let me remind you guys, you know, not to be uh, not to be discouraged by everything that's going on on the outside out there right now. You know, so, hey, we saw today that there was some type of uh, lifting of the mask mandate, you know, and so it's got people already arguing and complaining on Facebook again. It's like it's like now we're on to the next thing to argue about, you know, and I'm like, God, it never seems to end. <laughs> but we're going to praise God no matter what, you know, in the middle of the storm and in, in the middle of these crazy things that are going on in the world right now, we're still going to live for God because we know that God is going to, he's, he's the one who's going to stand firm in all this, you know, and if we cling to him, we're going to be all right, church, you know, we're going to be all right, so uh, don't worry about all that stuff, just stay encouraged in the Lord and stay encouraged in your personal relationship with God as well, amen. Can I, can I speak on that for just a second? Is that okay, guys? Because that's something I feel like God has been showing me, uh, you know, I feel like, I feel like God is, is, I mean, maybe you've already felt this and maybe this isn't anything new, but I really feel like God wants us to just draw closer and closer to him, you know, and just really seek him in this time, you know, and uh, I woke up this morning and, you know, normally I, uh, whenever I'm done working, guys, I work real early in the morning, so I'm done right now by 7 a.m., so I have the rest of the day to do anything I want. But when daylight savings time happens, I'm going to stop working at 8 a.m., okay? But usually when I'm done working that job, uh, it doesn't mean I'm done for the day. I'm not just sitting around in my underwear playing video games the rest of the day <laughs> on my bed, you know? <laughs> that sounds nice. I would love to do that, but I got too much to do, hey, man? I'm busier now than I was but when I had a regular job. And it, so I'm always doing stuff for the church and uh, stuff for the website and things like that. And uh, so normally I'm, I'm working on writing and things like that. But, um, you know, I felt like Pastor Larry God was just kind of dealing with me today. And, um, you know, I felt like he was saying, you know, all this all this stuff that you're doing is, is good. You know, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with all that stuff that you're doing because you're doing it for me. You're doing it for the Lord. Right. But he said at the same time, he said, you have to make sure that your cup stays full. You have to make sure that you get filled up in the Lord so that you can pour out into the life of other people as well. And you see, my fear, if I can say it like that, for you guys and for this church is that we're not getting filled up the way we should. 
because I want you guys to be able to pour out into the life of everybody else around you. You know, I want you to stay full. And it's like, if all this other stuff doesn't get done, who cares, Annie? Because we have God and we're full of God. You know, we have everything we need right there in his presence, you know. So I took a little time this morning and, uh, and I said, you know what, I'm going to start planning my days differently, Mary. I said, I'm going to start praying more in the mornings, you know, before I just jump right into my other work. And I said, if I don't get to anything else, that's okay, because I did the most important thing, which was praying, seeking the Lord, spending time with him, whatever he wants me to do, you know. And, uh, you know, when I first got saved, I spent a lot of time, you know, praying and listening to worship music. And uh, that I felt like that's what kind of got me through to where I am today. I didn't know a lot about the Bible, Mary. I didn't know anything about these scriptures. You know, the stuff that I talked to you guys about, I don't know that. I, I didn't know that back then, but all I knew was that I loved God and that I wanted to worship him. And, you know, he looked at me and he saw that, hey, I was ignorant in his word. I was ignorant in his scriptures. But one thing I did have was a spirit that wanted to worship God, that wanted to draw closer to him, that was a fool for God, you know. And uh, I remember I got prophesied over and somebody told me, don't be afraid to be a fool for God. And I think that's all of us as well. Don't be afraid to be f- don't be afraid to be a fool for God. Fall in love with him. Allow him to allow him to bathe you in his presence. Amen. Because that's where you'll find your answers. Amen. We need to get back to that place. You know, I think we just need to get back to that place and balance it with everything else that we have going on. You know, we, we can't ignore all the other stuff, but let's just make sure that we get God's presence inside of us as well. Amen. 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 I want you guys to turn to Matthew chapter eight. I have a I have something simple. F- I have something simple for you guys tonight, but um, something that I found very interesting. Amen. And um, I read this in a book actually uh, about a year ago, but it, it, God kind of brought it back to my spirit, and I was really studying it and looking into it. And He showed me something about this this topic that I'm going to talk to you about from like a whole another another angle. So I'm like, wow, you know, and I wanted to share that with you guys tonight. Amen. Matthew chapter eight, verse 21. We all know this scripture, Pastor Larry, where we all know this story right here. Let's go ahead and read it. We'll read it first. Amen. Matthew chapter eight, verse 21 and 22. It says, then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. (laughs) Let the dead bury their dead. (laughs) I've I've heard other people use that scripture and, you know, say a bunch of different things about it, but um, it's just, to me, this is just one of those common scriptures that we all know about, you know, the, we know about the story when Jesus told the man, don't even go bury your father, your dad's dead, let him stay dead, and you come and follow me, <laughs> and uh, there's actually a parallel to this scripture in Luke, uh, where the same story happens, and uh, that story just says, I think Jesus just tells him, you know, don't even worry about burying your, fa- burying your father, just come and follow me, and you go and preach the gospel, so it's kind of like the same thing, but just it's, it's said a little bit differently. But uh, I want y'all to think about that for a moment. What, what, what if you what if you came, or what if you called me by that word and you said, you know, Pastor Jamie, I'm not going to be able to come to church on Sunday because my father died, and uh, I'm I got to go bury my father. What if I told you? What if I said, don't worry about that. That's not important. I said, you be about the father's business, <laughs> and you come to church. Many of you guys would probably be very offended at what I just told you, right? Because I'm basically telling you, don't even worry about your dad's funeral. All right? Jesus is mean, right? <laughs> Seems a little mean, right? But there's actually something in this scripture that there's actually something in the scripture that we don't see right here in these lines of the Bible. There's something hidden there that you wouldn't know unless you study it out a little bit more, you know. I'm going to show you all what it is, but uh, that's why I I talk to you guys all the time about the importance of studying the scriptures and not just reading them. Now, that means 
reading is different than studying, right? Because when you just read something, you're just reading it, right? But when you study it, you're trying to see something that maybe God is trying to tell us something that, uh, that, that's there that we just can't see it with our naked eyes, you know? And I think that there's something more to this story. You know, a lot of people, they read this story, Mary, and they say, like, well, wh what did Jesus mean by this? You know, what, what do y'all think he meant? A lot of people just say where they were that he was basically giving this man like a blunt but an honest truth, you know, saying that even the things that we think are the most important, the things that are the most serious to us, the things that uh, we think take need all of our time are not as important as following God, even our family, even if our family passes on, even if they, they die. It's like their funerals are not even as important as, important as God. And I think there is kind of a truth to that. I think that is, I mean, that's, that is true, right? Because there is nothing that's more important than God, right? And, but I think, like I said, I think that there's something a little bit more to this scripture than we're not seeing. And I'm going to tell you what it is. Now, I needed to give you, I need to give you a little bit of history first about this scripture. And this is what a lot of people don't know about this scripture. So in those days, Patrick, when people would die, when people would die, how did they plan their funerals? How did they do funerals? You see, we think that we think that the way we have funerals today and the way we bury our dead today is the way that they did it back in those days. But that's not true. Things were very different back then. Very different. You know, I was doing a little bit of research about this and uh how many, well, I don't, I don't want to ask y'all this because y'all are going to be giving y'all's age, and I know y'all probably don't want to do that, but does anybody, does anybody know about the times where it wasn't even like 100 years ago where when people would die, they would actually have the funerals in their house, okay? Yeah. Was that, how, who, how long ago was that? Does, when you were young? You see, so it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> about eight years yeah. so that wasn't that long ago then you know like it was within our lifetime we would say that so the person somebody would die in the family and they didn't go to no funeral home or they didn't go to a church it was at the house <laughs> it was at the house the the body the the body was literally right there in the dining room <laughs> it was right there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> in the bedroom just for that I uh, see I should have talked to y'all about this so y'all could tell me more but that's what I heard you know I heard that it was like that back in the days now is it also true that they would keep the body in the house for like a few days almost a week, almost a week. <laughs> you see <laughs> this was just a few years ago crystal before our time but we don't do that today though and if we did do that today, some people would probably find that offensive, right? Or they would find it weird. But this was just a few years ago, okay? And now, I, now even like in the early 1900s, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about this, but in the early 1900s and in, and in the late 1800s, when people would die, this is kind of weird, okay? But they would dress the bodies up, and they would take pictures with the bodies as a as a... Okay, okay, so it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so they would, they, they were called, I think, like memorial photos or something. So they would have the family stand around the body like it was still alive, and they would pose with it, you know, I guess to get like one last photo, you know. Some, peop some people still do that today, see. But a lot of, <laughs> yeah, but most people would say today, Brother Edward, that that stuff is weird, right? Because why? Because our times have changed. And our culture has changed, and we don't look at things like that anymore. Now, what do we do? We, as soon as they pass on, you know, we give them to the funeral home. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. That's it. They dress it up. We have the funeral, put them in the ground, and that's it. Okay. And I know that there's also certain cultures that are alive today, Pastor Larry, that keep the body longer than that. Okay. So basically, what am I trying to say by all that? I'm trying to say that as time goes, our cultures and our practices change as well, especially when it comes to our, our burials and our funerals. So 
In other words, I'm trying to get your mind to open up and think that there has to be something more to this burial as well, because this is thousands of years ago in a nation thousands of miles away in ancient Palestine with a different religion, Judaism. So we shouldn't just kind of plug our own mindsets and the way we do things into the Bible, okay? Let me give you guys a, a, a Bible tip, okay? Whenever you read the Bible, try to be open and think that, hey, the way I see things and the way I do things today and the way America in 2021 does things is not the way they did it in the Bible. So you, why do you keep that mindset? Because if, if you try to plug everything and your, our culture into the Bible, you're going to get a different interpretation of the scriptures. And you're gonna, it's, it's going to cause you to see things in a light that the writer who wrote whatever you're reading didn't want you to get. So that's why you just have to be open to the cultures that they had as well, okay, and the way they did things. You know, they, it was very different than what we have today. You know, they were under the law. They had the Sabbath. Uh, remember, we've talked about their bathing rituals before, you know, how they would bathe, how they, they would take a bath somewhere, and they would walk all the way home, and then they would wash their feet. You know, we don't do things like that today, so things are different. And so, again, there has to be something different to this scripture. And so th th let, let, me, so let me back up now and, and talk to you about the way it was. In those days, they had something called a second burial, okay? So they had two burials. Do you know about this, Pastor Larry? There was this, during the time of Jesus, I believe it was like within a 100-year period and during this time, they had two burials. So let me, uh, let me tell you all the way it went. The first burial was this. As soon as the person died, they took the body and they wrapped it up and they put it like in a tomb or a cave and they would leave it there for a year. They would leave it there for a year so all the flesh would come off of it until there were bones left. That's why Jesus was in the tomb. He wasn't in the ground because they put his body there to decompose. Okay, that's the first burial. So they would put those bodies in that tomb for the flesh to drop off. And then as soon as it would die, they would immediately do that. They didn't wait three days. They didn't dress it up. The same day the body died, they wrapped it up and put it in a tomb. So it wasn't like they waited three days or four days or anything like that. And they would put it in the tomb, and then they would go into a seven-day period of mourning. It was just, this is a Hebrew custom, a Jewish custom. So they would stay in the house and they would mourn for seven days. After that seven days, then they would go about their business, but the, but the body would still be decomposing in the cave. After about a year, after the flesh was gone from the bones, they would go back to the tomb, Patrick. The, er, the oldest son would go back to the tomb, and he would unwrap the body and get the bones, and he would put them in something called an ossuary, which is like a chest. So they would gather all the bones, put it in a chest, and then they would take that chest into another burial site. Usually the burial site was like where their ancestors were. They had bones of their ancestors. That's why, like if you read like Old Testament scriptures, it says that like they took the bones of David and put them by his ancestors or something like that. That's what they called the second burial. So there were two burials. Okay. I think I got a picture, right, Pastor Larry? Um, I'll just, I'm going to show you all a picture of what that chest looked like. Is everybody following me so far? That's what the chest looked like in ossuary. They find these things all over Jerusalem when they're digging up and stuff like that. Uh, they've even believed, uh, they think they even found the bones of James, the brother of Jesus, in one of these. So that's what it looks like. So it's just a custom that they did. So... In other words, when I read this scripture about Matthew, Mary, when, when this man came up to Jesus and he said, let me go bury my father, it doesn't make sense to me that his dad died and his body was just laying at home. And he said, well, Jesus, let me go bury my father real quick. So what do you think he meant when he said, let me go bury my father? The second burial, not the first burial. You understand what I'm saying? So 
Because I've always just found it weird why he would ask Jesus, if his dad is laying dead somewhere, why, don't, why is he even there? You know, why isn't he taking care of the body? Why isn't he even tending to the body? Well, he said, let me go bury my father because apparently his father probably died about a year ago. The year is up and he was, he was in Jerusalem going to go gather the bones. And so he said, Jesus, he probably came into town. He said, Jesus, uh, everything you're saying is good. I want to follow you but let me go bury my father. What did he mean? The second burial. Let me go gather the bones and put the bones away. Okay. So you see, you wouldn't know that unless you do a little bit more study though, because again, it, it doesn't make sense that, uh, that the man, that the man's dad was dead. His body was literally laying somewhere back at home. He's like, and he's out with Jesus. Let me go bury my father. It just doesn't make sense. Right? So what did he mean? The second burial, the bones, let me go gather the bones and put them away, okay? Now, here's the thing. This is why they did that. So all, I, I just gave you guys the history. Why did they do that? Why did they wait for the flesh to decompose off of the bones? Why did the Jewish people do that? Because there was a belief, Gloria, that the flesh was sinful and that the flesh had to, be, had to decompose. And once the flesh came off the bones, then there was atonement there. And so they wanted that period of decomposition, if I could say it like that, to happen and for the flesh to come off because they believed that it was sinful. And as soon as all that flesh came off, they would go gather the bones and they would rejoice because the sinful flesh of the person who died is gone away and done with. The Jewish people believe that. But so it's to me, the reason why I think Jesus told this man not to go bury his father, one of the main reasons was because Jesus didn't like that belief that there was atonement in the decomposition of the flesh. So in other words, Jesus wasn't just being mean when he said that, and he wasn't just giving this man a truth. He was telling this man that you have this belief that there is atonement in the decomposition of that flesh. And that's not true because only I can bring atonement. Only I can bring completion. So in other words, that's not necessary. You don't have to wait for the flesh. The flesh, the decomposition of the flesh doesn't bring atonement to somebody. That's what Jesus was telling this man. He said, only I can bring atonement because by his blood, he was going to bring atonement, right? Uh, the, the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can atone for our sins, right? We know that. I think Pastor Larry had preached about this not too long ago. The book of Hebrews says that forgiveness doesn't come, but only by the blood, the shedding of blood. In other words, saying, God, I'm sorry, doesn't bring forgiveness. Apologizing to God doesn't bring forgiveness. Penance doesn't bring forgiveness. Going to confession doesn't bring forgiveness. It's only the blood of Jesus that brings forgiveness. Come on, somebody. Only the blood of Jesus Christ brings forgiveness. That's why the book of Hebrews says that Jesus shed his blood one time, and that one time was enough to bring forgiveness for the entire world. Amen. So in other words, if, if, if you're in need of forgiveness today, Patrick, and you're saying, well, I need forgiveness, I need forgiveness, what do I need to do? Well, if, if you think it's in something other than the blood of Jesus Christ, then you're out of luck because you can't get forgiveness, but only by the blood of Jesus. And you're like, well, what, Jesus already died. Exactly. The forgiveness has already been bought for you. You just have to receive that forgiveness. You just have to believe in that forgiveness that God shed his blood for you. That's the only thing that brings atonement. You guys, in the Old Testament, okay, we'll get back to this in just a moment, but in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice an animal to get atonement. You see that word all over the Old Testament, atonement, atonement, atonement. Take this goat, take this ram, shed its blood, and then you will have atonement for your sins. Now, in the New Testament, you don't see that word atonement, but what you see is this word propitiation, which we'll get to in a minute, which just means that Jesus was the appeasing. His, his sacrifice was what appeased God to forgive us of our sins. He, he was the atonement, basically. That's the Greek word for atonement. So, but his blood, again, the book of Hebrews says, was more powerful than the blood of all those animals that they could sacrifice in the Old Testament. So, 
We need to be people that rejoice today in the forgiveness that we have, the powerful forgiveness that goes into the future, Mary, and forgives all sins. Let me say that again, because that's the reason why, Patrick, I believe that your future sins have been forgiven, too, because Jesus died one time, and he's not, the Bible says he's not going to die again. If he's not going to die again, then we have to be forgiven of our future sins. We have to. Otherwise, we can't be forgiven because he's not going to die again. And his blood is the only thing that brings forgiveness. So we have to be forgiven of our past, present, and future sins. But man, you know, we, we just, we grow up thinking that the moment we give our lives to Jesus, all the sins from that point back <laughs> have been forgiven <laughs> and not forward. Anything you do from now on, you have to ask to be forgiven of it. But Again, for asking doesn't bring forgiveness, just the blood of Jesus did. That's why his, his, this, the, uh, the event on the cross, when he died on the cross, was the most significant event in the history of the world because it allowed, the Bible says, to bring reconciliation to the world. In other words, God is hugging us, and he's embracing us, and he's reconciling the world back to himself by that one act that Jesus did on the cross. That's why we all here, man, because of that right there. That cross, the blood that was shed for us, that's what brings the atonement, man. That's why we need to be rejoicing. Amen. Go to First uh, John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. How many of y'all would like to have y'all's bones put in that thing? When you, when they, <laughs> they go and dig your, dig your body up and gather your bones. And put them in a chest. I just, you know, I think, I just thought it was crazy, you know, that like, Edward, that's something that we wouldn't know, man, because the Bible doesn't say it. But, you know, th but that explains it. You know, if it, you, uh, there are ancient documents that, that write about the ossuaries and the second burial that the Jews had. So obviously that's what this man was telling Jesus about. Let me go bury my father, the second burial. And exactly, yeah, and he said, and he said, you, you, and the reason why the man, and let me just say it again in case it went over some of y'all's heads. The reason why the man said, let me go bury my father again, was because he believed that his father would be atoned by doing that. He believed that the, his father would be basically saved by, by his flesh being eaten away. And Jesus is saying, that's not true. Yeah, he's exactly. Yeah, he would be happy. He would be doing what the what what the customs of their day was. That was the atonement. I don't know where that belief came from in Judaism. I think uh, I read some things about it because that's not that's unscriptural, right? Jewish people don't believe that. So how did that custom come into that day? Well, you got to again, you got to think about the, the the days that they were living in. They were surrounded, and they were surrounded by the Roman rule, by um, like Greek philosophy, if I could say it like that. And the Greek people, they had these strange philosophies and these strange beliefs. So in the times of Jesus, the, the, the way the Jews lived was very different than the way they lived in the Old Testament. In the, in the, in the days of Exodus and, and David, it was very different because the Jews had come out of exile and now they're back in their land, but they're dominated by the Greeks by the Romans. And so they have all this influence around them of their religion, of their politics, of their culture. And so they adopted a lot of that stuff into their religion. One of them probably was this idea that there was sin in the flesh and that the flesh needed to, be, needed to leave. Isn't that, that's called Gnosticism. That's one of the beliefs of Gnosticism. I think that's, that could have been where it came from, but all we know is that that was a belief in their day, okay? So anyways, 1 John chapter two. Does everybody follow me so far? Amen. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Another scripture we all know, but I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to seal kind of what I'm saying. And he himself, who's that? Jesus. Amen. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the whole world. You know, that word propitiation right there, it means mercy seat. It means the atonement. 
He was the atoning sacrifice for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. That's why our job and our mission is to preach to the world and tell them, hey, come on in. Jesus it has forgiven you. You just have to receive that forgiveness and live in that forgiveness. Embrace that forgiveness because his sacrifice was for the sins of the whole world. Not just ours sitting in New Covenant Church. Not just ours, Brother Edward, but everybody else out there as well. Everybody at our jobs, everybody in the grocery store, the people out on the street, their sins have been forgiven, I believe but they just need to receive that forgiveness. Otherwise, it doesn't do us any good, right? Because you have to come home and embrace Jesus. Amen? So now back to the story of the man real quick, okay? Jesus said, there's no atonement in that. You don't need to go after that. That's meaningless to do that because I'm the one who's going to bring the real atonement. Now, I wanted to kind of share this with you guys. The reason why the man wanted to go bury his father was because he felt that he would get atonement, he would get completion, and he would get fulfillment out of doing that, right? And so that's the bigger, that's the bigger story behind that. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not where you get your atonement. That's not where you get your perfection. That's not where you get your completion. Your completion is found in me. And so, but let me ask you this. Was the man doing a terrible, like, horrible thing just by going to gather the bones of his father in and of itself? I don't think so. It's, it's, it, was the, it was the practice of their day, right? There's nothing wrong with going through all those motions. The problem with what he was doing was that he was doing it because he felt there would be atonement in it, because he felt that there would be fulfillment in it. And what I'm here to tell you today is that there are things in our life that we do that aren't necessarily wrong. But the reason why God might not like you doing it the way you do it is because you think that in doing it, you'll get atonement in those things. You'll get exactly the motive is wrong. You believe you'll find completion in those things. You believe that you'll find fulfillment in those things. And that's what God doesn't like. Because, hey, the Old Testament says, Mary, that God is a jealous God. Yes. That he wants, he wants you totally undivided. Yeah. Any of you ever had a, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend like that? <laughs> a jealous boyfriend or girlfriend, right? They don't want you talking to nobody else but them. Not even as a friend, right? <laughs> you got to call, Brother Edward. Every hour, tell them where you at. <laughs> you got to put that, that tracker on your phone and all that. They're going to go through your phone. If they see anything they don't like, they're going to be fighting. Why? Because they jealous, save it. They jealous. Well, that's a, that's, that's a bad kind of jealousy, right? <laughs> that's a bad kind of jealousy. But there, I believe there's also a good kind of jealousy as well. You know, hey, if I had somebody and, I, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with a little jealousy saying, you know, I want your attention to be on me. You know, I, I, want, I want me to be your number one. You know, and if I feel like I'm not your number one, then that's going to make me angry. <laughs> you know, now I'm not going to act out in anything, but it shouldn't be that way with your spouse. Your spouse should be your number one. Right. And, and if, if they're not your, they're your, your number one, but something else is your number one, like your job, then they have every right to be a little upset at you. Because the way God has ordained it is that you and your spouse are one. There's nothing closer than than. Than, than you and your spouse. Exactly. That's why people get upset when you're spending too, too much time with your friends. Not your friends, your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you ain't spending time with me. That's going to make me upset. And you're in the wrong when you do that. Even if, even if you're, but you know, a lot of you are saying, well, I'm doing that because they're treating me bad lately. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hang out with my friends more. Well, that's not the way to handle things, right? You got to talk to your spouse. Tell them how you feel, right? But that's a good kind of jealousy, right? God is a jealous God. He, he, I believe that. I believe he's a jealous God, but it's in the good way, right? He, he wants our attention to be on him, and he wants, he wants to be the number one of our life because when God is the number one in our life, then he knows that everything else falls into place. And that's what causes everything to work out. Your relationships, 
your marriage, your job, finances, health, everything else will fall into place if he's your number one. That's why he says, make me your number one. Seek me, find me, draw near to me because I want to be good to you. Amen. And so, see, these things that we're doing, guys, uh, whatever it might be, you know, what, what, whatever it might be that's, that we have our attention on, they're not wrong in and of themselves. But the, the, the bad thing is, is that we think that in doing them, we're going to be complete. We think that in doing them, hey, I'm going to find completion if I get this job. I'm going to find completion if I get with this person. I'm going to find fulfillment. I'm going to be truly happy as soon as I get that house I've always been pining for. Or as soon as I get that paycheck I've always been looking for, that position I've always been looking for, that, that promotion I've always been looking for. When I get that, I'll find my completion. Again, are those things wrong? Hey, I want a good house. I want a nice house with a jacuzzi. Amen? <laughs> I'm speaking it in Jesus' name. <laughs> there, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But if that's my goal, if that's what's going to make me complete, if that's where, if that's, if I can say it like this, if that's what's going to be my atonement, then that's what's wrong. Because only he can bring atonement in my life. Only he, only his blood, again, I'm going to say it again, only his blood will bring atonement in my life, completion, joy, happiness in my life. And um, I wanted to point this out to you guys, too. How many of you know what the word religion means? Religion. Religion actually, it comes from a Latin root word, which means to bind. So in other words, religion binds you. It, 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 it ties you up. You know, have you ever heard the saying like, oh, Sister Mary religiously goes to Rositas every Monday morning? What does that mean? That means... She, she binds herself to going to Rositas every Monday. She, she's tied to it. She binds herself to it. Uh, and we make these things our religion, so to speak. You know, some of us, we make our jobs our religion. We make our children our religion. We make a religion out of sports. Hey, I've seen some dudes like that, right? They go to the football games and they worship. <laughs> 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 you ever seen that? Yeah. Whenever they put it, <laughs> old pastor said it like that. He, he said, he don't know why, Mary, every time somebody puts a camera in somebody's face, it just makes them go crazy, right? They, they stick their tongue out, put their hands up and all that because they go to them football games, Pastor Larry, and they worship. It's their religion. It's, it's their religion. And religion, and I'm going to say it like this, too. Again, religion is not a bad thing. I know we, we kind of give that impression sometimes, but the Bible does talk about true religion. And it tells us what true religion is. And, you know, the James says that true religion is basically helping the poor and, and doing things like that. Yeah, taking care of the widows and things like that. But really, our religion is God. Because he's what we tie ourselves to. So religion isn't bad in and of itself. Again, Patrick, religion, but it can be bad if your religion is something else that won't bring you atonement in your life, that won't bring you fulfillment in your life. Think about some things in your life that are really so important to you that we, that we give more time to those things other than the Lord, that we give more energy to other than the Lord. I know people who wear themselves out for their job, tire themselves for their job. I mean, I used to do that. I used to come home stressed, brother. I was stressed, defeated, you know, still working when I got home, Mary, on my phone, texting me, people texting me at work, telling me, what do I do about this? What do I do about this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ain't the only one, amen? I thought, hey, probably we've all, we've all been there, right? But what is that? You know, hey, if we're not careful, we can make those things our religion. What does that mean, Pastor Jamie? It means that you can bind yourselves to those things. And the only thing that we should be bound to is the Lord. And that's the problem that this man had in this story was that he, was, he, was, he had too much trust in this act of burying his father. 
you know, he, he thought that it was going to bring atonement. And that's a serious thing to talk about because the only thing that brings atonement is Jesus's blood. So for you to say that you're going to get atonement or fulfillment or completion in anything else is almost blasphemy to God because he's the only one that wants to be in that area of your life. And that's why God looks at us sometimes and he says, you know, hey, you're, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just that your eyes are not on me the way that they should be. And when your eyes aren't on me, nothing's going to work out for you, man. Everything's going to fall apart for you. That's why I want you to have your eyes on me. That's why I want to be your number one, so that you can prosper, the Bible says. He wants us to reign in life as kings and priests on this world. Our mission is to bring the kingdom to this earth, is to bring Jesus to this earth, to make this earth look just like heaven. But we ain't doing that when he's not our religion, when he's not our atonement, when he's not our completion. So that's the question I'm presenting to you guys today. Is he your atonement? Is he your completion? Amen. So that's the only reason why we're complete. That's the only reason why we're victorious today, because of his blood. Amen. You know, there's there's plenty of things in my life. I'm going to just say this and then I'll be done. But there's there's plenty of there's been plenty of times in my life where I, I found myself in a place where I just, like I told you at the beginning, I just need more of God. You know, I'm, I'm where I need to just lift my cup up to the Lord and say, Lord, fill my cup because lately I've been drained. And why am I drained? Because he hasn't been my fulfillment lately. He hasn't been my completion lately. And he should be. And I, I've, that's that right there to me is the number one battle that every Christian faces is trying to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's why I talk about that a lot, trying to stay full of the Lord, trying, you know, trying, to stay, uh, trying to stay strong in the Lord so that you can be beneficial to other people around you because that's how God wants us to live our lives. And, hey, there are times where we are not walking in the spirit as we should and allowing God to fill us up. So what I'm trying to tell you guys today is to not find your completion in all those other things. Don't find your fulfillment in those other things, because in reality, when you do, what you're saying is that those things are going to bring you atonement in your life. Those things are going to bring you perfection in your life, but they're not. Those things are going to be gone just like everything else around you. And the only thing that's going to be standing at the end of the day is Jesus Christ, God in your life. So why not put our focus on him, man? The Bible talks about putting your mind on eternal things and not on the temporal things that are going to go away. Put them on the eternal things, which is Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. A simple word, but hey, that blessed me. Amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. Y'all know I'm trying to be done a little bit earlier, you know, on Wednesday nights. So, uh, but I do want to, I do want to pray because I know that there's, uh, I know that there's some needs and things like that. And, um, how many of you are, ex I, f um, I forgot to make this announcement too, how many of you are excited for Scott coming on Sunday, amen? Brother Scott's going to be with us on Sunday, uh, so uh, be sure to come on Sunday and invite somebody if you can as well, you know, to come out, because uh, I'm sure he's, he's going to want to give some words from the Lord, and I'm sure he's got something to say, and we love Scott, amen? So let's just come out and, and, and be a part of that. Yes, Patrick. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, when, I, when I was thinking about that at the beginning, I, I forgot that Scott was going to come at the beginning of the month. So this Sunday will be the first Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, of the month, right? So it'll be the next Sunday after that. And uh, that's when we're also going to have the children's church back up as well, okay? So we kind of just moved everything to next week since Scott is coming this week. But uh, yeah, there's going to be that as well. We're going to have the children's church back up and going. We're getting the material for that. So um, just come out and be a part of that, amen? come out and be a part of that. So are there are there any needs in this place today? Anybody have any needs? I know there was any. For Diane, that's right. Yeah, Diane. I know she's not feeling well. She's not with us tonight, so we're going to pray for her. Uh, yes. Richard, too. Okay. All right, Richard. He's not feeling well. Or, okay, we're going to pray for Brother Richard, too. I miss Richard. Amen. I want to see him. Amen. And um, Frankie, okay. Amen. We're going to pray for him as well. 
Amen. And for Grandpa, yes, yes. It's on Friday. Okay. Amen. We're going to pray for that. Okay. All right. Okay. For Audra as well. Amen. And for her knee. Okay. Yes. We're going to pray for that as well. Amen. Hey, on, uh, on Sunday, when God's spirit was here, I felt that his spirit was flowing through this place and touching and healing. So I know he can do it again. Yes, Crystal. Amen. Yes. There's a lot of people going next week to get it. Yes. Sir. For oh yeah, uh, Alice. Yeah, your your yeah your aunt right. Yes. Yeah. For her uh, for her ankle. Yes. Yes. Amen. She had a a break, I believe, in her ankle. So we're gonna pray for that. I think she's doing okay now. I asked Larry about it before the service started. So um, I think she's doing okay. But you know she's healing, and we need to continue to pray for that healing as well. Amen. So let's take these knees before the Lord. Amen. Father, thank you for your spirit in this place, Lord. Thank you for your word that went forth, God. And I thank you that your your healing touch is moving through this place, God. There were a, there's a lot of needs, I believe, out there, Father. There's, there's a lot of people that need healings in their bodies or that need, you know, just some kind of uh, just some kind of moving of God in their life. And so, Lord, we're taking these needs before you, Father, and we're believing that you're moving on behalf of these needs, Lord. Father, we lift Diane up to you right now, Father. I pray, Lord, that, you know, there would be a complete healing in her body. I know she's not here tonight because she's not feeling well. So, Father, we pray for a healing in her body right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we are not asking. We're declaring for that healing, Father, speaking that healing in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that it is complete as well for Audra because, you know, her knees bothering her father. So we lift her up. Our, this church, we lift her up to you, Father. And I speak that there would be comfort and there would be a healing that would take place in her leg, in her knee, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we also pray for for Frankie as well, Lord, for his, you know, the issues that he might have in his body, Father. I thank you that a healing is taking place right now, Father. We lift him up to you. Move on Frankie, Lord, just like you did this Sunday, Lord. Move on him, Father. Sing over his body, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Continue to do that healing, that gradual healing in his body. And Father, just as uh, you're doing that continual healing in Joe's life as well, Lord, we lift him up. We lift Grandpa Joe up to you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that the surgery is going to go well, Father, this Friday, Lord, that you would guide the hands of the doctors, Lord. Father, that he's, this surgery is going to go so well, Father, he's going to come out, Lord. He's going to be energized, Lord. And the healing is going to continue, Father, just like I know it is, Lord. And I thank you for it, Father. I, we thank you in advance, Father, that it has been done, Lord. And Father, we pray, Lord, for Crystal's mom as well, Father, you know, that in her and anybody else that's going to get this vaccine, Father, next week or in the upcoming days, Lord, that there would be no side effects, Father, that there would be, that it would, that it would work, you know, that it would be, that it would help them, Lord, with their health, that it would protect them, Father. So, Lord, we, we don't speak against this vaccine, Lord. You know, if it's if it's going to do a healing in their life or a protection in their life, then let it be unto them according to your word, Father. So we just, we thank you, Lord, that it's, it's going to go well for them and that it's going to help them, Lord, and protect them, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, Father, I feel like there was one that I forgot, but that's okay. <laughs> a couple I forgot because, Lord, I know you know those needs, Father. You know, we just lift it up to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for Alice, Lord for the, that healing that would take place in her ankle, Lord, that those bones would just be aligned, Father. Continue to move in her life, Lord Jesus. Continue to do that healing, Lord, and comfort her, Father, right now. Don't let her be discouraged, Lord, but let her be encouraged, Father, knowing that your spirit is right there with her, Father. So I thank you, Lord, just for all you're doing. The rest of this week, Lord, I pray that we would feel empowered, Lord Jesus, that we would feel strong in the Lord as we leave this place, knowing, Lord, that you're on our side, that you go with us, Father. Let us be energized. Let us have strength and joy in the Lord, Father. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for this service. Thank you for your spirit, Lord, this week. Thank you for continuing to move. And Lord, you know, for people that are watching right now, Lord, I just, I pray for our live friends that are watching as well, Lord. You know, Lord, I thank you that they're watching. I thank you that they're a part of this church, Lord. And Father, I just, you know, I just sense that there might be somebody watching, Lord, that, that 
has some type of serious unspoken, you know, need. And, um, you know, um, church, as I was fixing to just end right now, I felt like the Lord just kind of strength, you know, just kind of quickened me to that. So let's just pray for the people that are watching, you know, as well. And, and you know, I don't, I don't want anybody watching, you know, to feel like they're defeated or to feel low or to feel like they have no victory in their life, Lord. So, you know, whoever it is, Lord, I, I pray that you would just encourage them, Lord. I pray that you would just let them know, Father, that you're right there with them, Lord, and that you've never left them, you've never forsaken them, God, that you love them, Lord, just like you love all of us, Father, and that you're, you're there to strengthen them and get them through whatever it is that they're going through, Father. So we just lift them up, Lord. We lift, we lift our church up to you. We lift the people that are watching up to you, Father. Move in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for all you're doing. We bless you and we love you. In the name of Jesus. And the church said, amen. Amen, church. Y'all are dismissed. I love y'all.